Hey guys, Spooks here, and welcome back to the Town of Light. We just had our door, the doors that can only be opened from the outside. Opened. Pretty sure the only people in here are me and Charlotte. Nope. Nope. Absolutely not. If there's anything I've learned from all the horror movies I've seen, you don't... One, you don't go into an abandoned asylum. Two, if you're in a room that can only be opened from the outside, and it's opened by a doll, or it's open and all of a sudden you hear a doll, don't go to the doll! Oh, I'm moving. Oh, she's naked. Keep the camera off the naked lady. Uh, I don't want to get banned. Hey, you took Charlotte. Back here, you big old meanie head. Back. Hmm. This. Mm, I don't like the orderly taking the vulnerable young woman into the bathroom. I might have to be making a cut. I might get banned from Twitch. Please don't let this be what I think it's going to be. Little baby. Baby, okay. Well, since I'm gonna cut that flashback out, um, bet you can probably already know what happened. Um, then the doctor said there was something growing inside of her. Okay, well there's a lot more nudity in this game than I thought there was, considering I thought there was zero. And here we are. Can, can I leave? I can. I'd like to not be here anymore. So I don't know how to get to that synopsis menu I was talking about. I have no idea. I went there with something. Why is this door open? This door wasn't open before. And it's daytime. Can I leave? I feel like having a lot of bad memories in this place is not great. It's not what I need in my day. Didn't really need the whole sexual abuse thing. I guess neither did she. Please don't have anything jump out at me. I'm a vulnerable little child. I don't know how to get to that menu. I don't remember. Ah, well, thank you. Okay. Bernie's diary. I don't like the diary, it's scary. I'm missing a whole lot. Yeah, I don't like this part. I don't like that. I'm missing a whole lot of the diary though. Sorry, that's probably awful to look at. He felt that he was. I chased him away. I insulted him. He was proud, handsome. He said things about me to other people, which he shouldn't have said. Mother caught me coming home drunk. She beat me and sent me to 
speak to Don Gino every day. He came back and tried to speak to me. I think he liked me. Sometimes I sent him packing and I started shouting at him. But other times I embraced him. I held him tight and loved him. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't bind himself to me. I was 16 and ill. I had no future. I didn't get out of bed for weeks. Then I did things I was ashamed of. I slept with men. The guilt tore my soul. And the light came back to torture me. I invented stories to justify my actions. I couldn't bear my own weight. Those are two words. Mom found out about it. Her voice split my head. I pushed her away because I was afraid of dying, and I shouted to the whole world what was happening to me and that I didn't understand. The police arrived and they carted me away. I remember the onlookers shaking their heads. They would be better off without me, cleansed of shame, with something to talk about for a while. Yeah. Um, how do I memories? I, I don't want to relive any of this. This is bad. I have a flashlight. Well, that'd have been nice to know. Dear director, I have been working at this institution for five years now. I'm a simple person, I'm not educated, and I feel embarrassed about writing to you. I always try to look on the bright side, but sometimes we are called upon to do difficult things. That's our duty, and I will understand and accept it. There's no alternative. However, I have decided to write to you because something is happening which is simply unacceptable. I'm well aware that there's, something among, there's someone among us who devotes too much attention to the younger female patients who are confused. The serious nature of this fact has compelled me to write to you. I am certain of your indignation and of the measures you will adopt to solve the problem. Please accept my warmest regards and respect. At least someone was watching that for us. Oh, I guess there was a reason going in there because that's where the memories were. I don't know if there's a reason going in there though. That's backwards. Is it going here? No, this is different. Do I need to go in here? Probably not. She stayed with Renee during those terrible medical examinations, and that gave her the strength to survive. Oh, we talk about the really sweet nurse. Did I leave now. This is not a happy place, and I like going to happy places. to be letting me leave. Ooh, what's this? Wait, this is where I came from. 
right? Yeah. yeah. This is where I came from. Remember this little shack. Just don't I have Charlotte? And that's like the only reason I came back or something. Can I leave? I think I can leave. What? Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. The increasing number of cases of attempted suicide requires that of a definite stand to be taken against this behavior. Our current position is to consider these behaviors as highly deviant, disgraceful, and unpatriotic. Especially in the case of young girls. Please provide us with the enlightenment on the subject. A legible signature. You haven't talked about disgraceful and unpatriotic. You talked to the other guy. The cellar. I don't like that I found the cellar. I didn't even want to find the cellar. I don't like that there's a bed in the cellar. I don't like that there's a bowl in the cellar. I don't like the cellar. I don't like any part of that. I hate all of that, actually. Don't really know where I'm supposed to go either. There's a lot of trash cans with bottles in them. Whoopsies. Whoop, oh, I'm stuck. Was that supposed to go this way? It's the wrong way. I don't even know. I'm back at the beginning. Well, I guess there is no escape. Which might be the whole message of this game. I don't know. I don't really know what's going on. I also lost Charlotte again, so... What? Why do you do that weird sound against me every time? Do I need to go up to the next floor? They went to the gynecology ward on the upper floor. I do. I don't know if I'm... Oh, duh. That makes sense. I don't know if I'm going to keep playing this game just because there's a lot more nudity than I ever thought that there would be. I need to remember that when I edit this. I feel like those weren't there last time. But I could be wrong, I suppose. That's not it. Ambulatorio. Ambulatorio C. This is it, probably. Okay, I'm even at. I'm so dumb. I have been trying to go in here multiple times. Ooh, what's this? Patient transfer document, date of birth, blah, 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 blah. Hey! His father was Luigi. Wow. I'm going to have to figure this out at some point. Because I don't think I should be handling this equipment. That, I guess, probably doesn't even work. I guess it doesn't really matter. Gynecologia. Yeah, this looks good. August 21st, 1938. Confidential. Dear A, I know what you think about these things, so I'm referring a patient to you, Renee T. This wretched girl got out of control and caused trouble in the grounds. She's almost three months pregnant. The nurses should be more alert. I'm examining the girl on the 28th. 
I'll handle things very carefully, don't worry. The 21st of August, 1938. Then they said that Renee was crazy, and that the illness was all in her head. Careful, little girl, careful. What am I looking at? Oh, I was scared, oh. And I didn't talk to anyone oh, about oh, the illness. Oh, close. I'm gonna have Only to... Her. Not even the other that. doctor. He never touched Renee. He just wrote things down. I don't like how you talk to the third person. Don't be afraid, he said. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to assume that it Do wasn't. Do you want to know what I'm writing? No, no I don't. I note down what I observe in you. Everything I see. He didn't hate Renee. He tried to help her. But he rarely examined her in those small surgeries. I think that's where I'm going to leave this episode, and possibly the series. I don't know. I've got to think on that one. This... Like, the story's really good. There's just a lot of nudity. Also, I can open these now, so I'm going to... I'm going to look at these first. Oh, this is her medical March fire. March 12th, 1938. Renee T. 16 years old. Menstruation at age 12. Housewife. Father unknown. Mother seamstress. Admitted in observation yesterday morning from Pontedera, accompanied by a police officer authorized by the examining magistrate of the Court of Pisa to be admitted for a psychiatric evaluation, which I have carried out. Medical certificate. Mental illness preceded by warning signs. Has suffered from depression for a year, believing she had tuberculosis. Food deprivation. We can't read this document, it is forbidden. We mustn't. If they find out, there will be trouble. Don't be scared. Nothing will happen to you. We have to look for Amara. We must hurry. We have to follow the memories and make sure they don't fade. She is frightened, hears noises and ghosts, presents serious signs of anxiety, psychosis, suffers from hallucinations. She is anxious, confused, her expression is distressed, a questioning look as if terrified, disoriented. She feels confused, hears voices shouting in her head, she doesn't understand things properly. She has been feeling unwell for two or three months. When questioned, she replies, My mother wants to hurt me. I am always scared of her. She chases me. Why are you here? I argued with my mother and was so upset that I felt like my head was spinning. There was a woman there who wanted to force me into a life of prostitution. They wanted to condemn me to be burned at the stake. Children whispered, called my name. March 16th. She couldn't sleep last night. They wanted to condemn her to be burned at the stake. April 4th. Transferred to the calm ward still under my supervision. Yes, that's true. The ward where Amara was. Yes, the stake. The children wanted to burn Renee. She had to pay for what she'd done, like witches at the stake. What had you done? How was April 21st. the wrong? She's no awake this morning and is responding to questions. Complains of headache. She became agitated when she found out her mother was there. She says that one day, many years earlier, she was with a friend of hers and met a man who made her get into a car and took her for a ride. He made her smoke cigarettes and drink liquor, and the man showed her certain... things. He tried to hurt her and made her go crazy. She says he promised to marry her and made her swear to keep what had happened a secret. These facts were essentially confirmed by her mother. After that, she became arrogant, impatient, and hostile towards her family, especially her mother. She started taking off her clothes in public. Her moods would swing from laughter to tears. 
She rends. She pleasures herself. I can't remember these things. Only the guilt, the stake. I know I deserve to pay for that guilt. I knew it even then. It wasn't your fault, though. Yeah? She was uncooperative during the examination. She didn't want to be stripped, and her body remained rigid. I mean, I would want Volunteer to be either. attention almost totally absent. Fair. Probable hallucinations. April 23rd. Sorry. Confused ideas. Unable to maintain a spontaneous conversation. Reflex is all normal. Reactive pupils. Let's find Amara, and we'll find the full medical records. Go on. June 1935. Sorry. After much you keep going to the end of the episode, then I don't. Some clinics for the privileged. The moment for action has finally arrived. Volterra is the right place. It's an avant-garde hospital. The perfect place for a doctor who really wants to make a difference. November 20th. <sighs> Crossing the threshold of the asylum was similar to entering another dimension. A world of smells, noises, and images, which it is almost impossible to imagine, describe, or explain. August 1936. The situation is similar to that in many other institutions. The department is overcrowded. Hundreds of patients are supervised by a handful of nurses who are forced to tie the more distressed ones to their beds or to radiators. They do 24-hour shifts. It's impossible to work like this. We doctors rarely see the female patients, and it's the nurses who tell us what's happening to the women. Oof. The overpowering we'll go through this and end it. The constant din of shouts and voices that are barely recognizable as human. Dirty, naked bodies, devoid of any dignity. The lunatic asylum gets under your skin and wears you down. I often consider resigning. I feel useless, impotent. A sort of merciful jailer. A mercy that helps no one and only helps to ease my conscience. March 15th, 1938. Dramas are played out before my eyes every single day, and I try to distance myself from them, and just do the best I can. But a girl arrived some days ago. I couldn't avoid her gaze. All she asked in her dignified silence was not to be ripped away from her world. And me. I'm old enough to be her father, the father she never had, who didn't want her, who rejected her without even knowing her. I too refused what she asked me. I couldn't do anything but add my signature and consign her to hell. A danger to herself and to others, and a cause of public scandal. This was what was written on the accompanying note from the police headquarters. It was difficult not to agree with it. How much more violence must this poor girl be subjected to? Her gaze is so intense, so far removed from the carefree nature which should be the joyous hallmark of her age. I cried myself to sleep in my solitude. I kept thinking about those sad and frightened eyes staring at me. I... I couldn't even work for the CNA. I just, it was just too sad. But that's where we're going to end that one. Actually, I was in here. Okay. That's where we're going to end this one. Um, definitely a heavy episode. If 
you've ever been sexually assaulted or anything like that, definitely reach out to someone. I know it can seem scary, but I guarantee it's not your fault. So I'm actually going to put down the link below a link to a sexual abuse hotline. Uh, but hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Until next time, stay spooky. Toodles. Mm -hmm.